Um, home is Los Angeles. Sorry, I'm saying, okay, got it. What part of Los Angeles, Jenny? Sigrina? Los Angeles, let's just say that. Let's say Los I lived in Koreatown. Okay. And it was really hard being the shortest person there and Jewish. Yeah. It didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I liked Koreatown. Yeah, it was fun. It's it's still fun. I uh I go there occasionally, do karaoke and go get good Korean food. That's about it. Yeah, absolutely. What's your favorite thing to do when you're not being an actress, singer, and comedian and nobody knows who you are and you do it out in public? Thrifting. I love that. I love to go thrifting, yeah. antiquing. Oh yeah, yeah. Any like antique shops, I hit up a few in Vegas which were fun um any kind of weird weird stores anything like that I'm very into that you like the arts district here in Vegas yeah I went and did like a bunch of vintage shopping and like looked at stuff it was kind of sad because I could see like a lot of the stores closed and years ago I did the strat and uh there was a lot more stores so that was a little sad but it is sad so true mm -hmm. So I saw you at the Comedy Cellar, and I'm going to do your intro now. Sure. That's the way I fly. Um, you guys at home, I know a lot of you don't watch when it's happening, and I'm okay with that. That's fine. As long as you look after the fact on my YouTube, which happens to be comedian Linda Marcus Smith, four names. Anyway, today have we got a fabulous comedian, actress, and singer here. Jenny Zagrino. Thank you. you. Pick her up, watch her stuff, buy her specials, see the movies she's been in, support her. Follow Go her OnlyFans. There you go. Very important. I only have one fan and it's broke. <laughs> they installed it. I'll show you. They installed it and dropped it. Oh, God. And so I've got a crash in the counter and the machine doesn't work, but it looks pretty. <laughs> it does look nice. <laughs> I didn't sue them. I just like, oh, well, it's meant to be. <laughs> I'm a Not little- Not crack in the crack in the counter though. I know, as long as they don't ding me for it, you know, I'm fine. I'll live around the ding. <laughs> I'm a ding bat, whatever. Yeah. Yep. So Jenny Zagrino's our guest. And like I said, she's a triple threat. Actress, comedian, and singer. So I would I say I'm barely a singer. I mostly I would put in I put in writer in that. Got it. Sing. Well, seven. I sing karaoke, and if anyone wants me to sing something, I will. But yeah, comedian, actress, writer. Super. Well, your voice is very melodic. I can well, hear you. singing in it. So that I do like to sing. Yeah. I do too. I, I got told in Nashville that I had a nice voice. Have you been told you have a nice voice? Yes. Yes. What's your favorite genre to sing at karaoke, et cetera? Hmm. I don't know. My favorite karaoke songs are probably 90s songs. Um, yeah. And then like occasionally I'll do like a Lady Gaga or something like that. But. Holy but yeah, I mean, it's just all fun shit. Yeah. Well, let's get in a DeLorean and go for a ride back to all the right. I want to know little Jenny, the four-year-old, the five-year-old at your house, at school, paint us that picture. Because we see you now. We have, I can't, I can hardly relate if I don't know who you were back then. Um, I was a, a little girl. <laughs> and then, um, I grew up, uh, my parents divorced when I was three. So grew up between two houses, grew up a very diverse family. Mother's Jewish, dad's um, Italian Catholic, uh, mom's Russian Jew, uh, used to go to Hindu camp, you know, got, I know, you know, got all the religions in. Um, you know, both my parents are very smart, educated, um, lovely people. Um, and, you know, mother's typical Jewish mom. Um, <laughs> and 
yeah, just like my dad was funny. My mom's funny in her own way. My, my family would always tell me my mother was very funny. If I could speak Russian, I'd see how funny she was. <laughs> she loves dirty jokes. Um, so yeah. And then, you know, just like uh, I was the youngest until I was 20 and then my dad had a kid. So yeah, just that's about, I mean, kind of just regular divorce kid childhood, just moving from town to town kind of stuff. Well, when you were doing your comedy at the Rio Comedy Cellar the other night, you had mentioned that you were half Jewish and as anybody else. And I clapped and we had a moment there where we got to know each other and you told me you loved me. <laughs> like, it's so, you know, like your, your mother is Jewish. So that's more condoned, accepted than yeah. in this particular case. My mother was had a Christian dad. So like I was, I wasn't Jewish, but look, we're all going to, if the Holocaust comes, we're all dying. So (laughs) you and I are going to die together. So it doesn't matter. You tell, you tell, uh, tell um, Nazis that, oh, oh no, 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 no. Actually my mother isn't technically Jewish. So I'm not Jewish. Yeah. They're not going to give a shit. (laughs) You know, like, do you ever touch, um, the Holocaust deniers in your comedy? Um, I don't, I don't come across many. I will say since the Kanye stuff, I've, I encountered my first kind of anti-Semitic um, heckler in uh, um, Anchorage, Alaska. Um, but it mostly hasn't been a problem. I mean, just the occasional like, oh, you're Jewish. Uh, there are some people in the comedy community I've had to, um, you know, ixnang it out um, because uh, oh, they've said some things, but mostly it's been fine. I don't know, um, you know, with the with the Chappelle's thing and the Kanye thing, I think it's going to be a little bit rough for us for the next few years. So we'll see how it goes. Exactly. I don't think this is the decade for the Jews. I don't think so. I really don't. I don't think it's our time. <laughs> I don't think and I'm so. sure some people will be like, well, you guys have had it good long enough. It's like, all right. <laughs> all right. It just um I've actually been like trying to talk to my comedian friends about did you watch Dave Chappelle's special or uh, his thing? I played it twice because I wanted to know where he's really coming from. Is it really humor? Is it hate speech couched in humor? I wanted to get a vibe. I don't know if it's hate speech, right? I think what he did was he did that very, um, you know, he did that thing that a lot of like very extremist right wing talking heads will do. They'll be like, I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking questions with the thing where you're like, oh no, you're like, like to like to compare the uh, Jews in Hollywood to the mob or a gang is like, it's like, I caught it. I caught what you're doing. And I think that someone else might not catch it, but it'll stay in their brains. Um, Was it harmful? Yeah, definitely. I think it was super harmful and not, didn't help anybody. You know, there are a lot of Jews in Hollywood. There's also a lot of Asians in New York city. So, I mean, what are you going to, like, what's, what are you saying, Dave? We all know what Dave is saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I've, I've loved him from the get-go, and yet I, I left with the question mark about how I feel. I thought that he had brilliant jokes as usual, but I thought yeah. he could have he stayed away from this better, you know, but he didn't. I think, I mean, he could he could definitely have talked about it, but he could have talked about it and being like, yeah, Kanye is wrong, but he just kind of echoed what Kanye said in a more eloquent fashion and draped in that Dave Chappelle, like twinkle in his eye, like I'm crossing the line, aren't I, huh? Try to cancel me. You can't do it. It's like, I don't, I don't want to get him canceled. I love Dave. I just wish that he would not sow division, but me too. You know, what, do you, what can you do? Absolutely. What can you do? What can you, you know? do? So you, your parents divorced, my parents divorced. Um, mm-hmm. My parents were slower at it, probably because they're a lot older than your parents. But yeah, they divorced when I was in seventh grade. 
Do you remember that shock that oh no, I, I was I was three, I don't remember. That's good. Yeah. I'm sure it, I'm sure for you it was definitely shocking and it probably wasn't as prevalent when you were growing up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I'm like I'm 71, so yeah. Yeah. I'm oh yeah. So I'm sure when the 60s they got divorced. Yes. Yeah, that was like not very many women were liberated, really. You know, my mom was a bartender getting a divorce. So it's like, whoa, what a story. Oh, your mom was cool. Yeah, she was cool. She was like a, one of the OG sluts. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I have jokes about that. Well, <laughs> so you grew up and were you quiet in school and around your house or? Um, I don't think I was quiet. I think I was just more observant right because when you're like the youngest uh you're just kind of like observing everyone else um and I wouldn't say I was quiet I had a lot of friends I was pretty sociable um but I was also like a fat kid and I'm also still a fat adult and that's fine um but growing up in the 90s as like a fat kid you know I mean I was put on a diet when I was like four and I think that did more to fuck with me than like anything else <laughs> oh my gosh yeah yeah so I was always fat my dad would fat shame me he'd tell me my le legs look like upside down beer bottles oh well he's a dick <laughs> he's a dead dick now <laughs> dead dick now yeah <laughs> but you love him right you love your parents but I mean you know you love the people that traumatize you yeah. Stockholm syndrome is a bitch but um <laughs> No, I, I, I love my mom. It's just that like, she's in, you know, like ultimate denial. <laughs> I'll bring it up and be like, remember when you used to lock the fridge and she was like, it was a joke. You know, it was a joke. And I was like, I don't know. I didn't seem that funny at the time. <laughs> so, you know, they're like, they're all like queens and kings of denial. So it's fine. Exactly. Exactly. So in school, you were, you had a lot of friends and you, you were an observer. And then at what point did you start, what made you delve into acting? How early did acting and comedy come into your life? Very early. I think I, I was in a school report that I did on like what I want to be when I grew up. I was 12. I said I wanted to be a comedian like Billy Crystal and Robin Williams. So very early on, I was like, I want to do Com I, I didn't know what that meant but I was like I want to do comedy and um because I just grown up watching comedy and comedy central on tv and like Monty Python and all of the like live at the improvs um which we all know Bud Friedman just passed I did not know him personally but I would like to thank him for all that he's done for comedy absolutely um and uh, yeah, it just like, uh, I just always grew up on it. So when I was 15, I took a class and then I did it for a little bit and I stopped and then I picked it up again when I was 18 and then I stopped and I picked it up again when I was 21 and I never stopped. So the first time you got on stage to do stand up, did you do improv first or stand up or? Or was it acting first? Paint me that. Um, it was, I think, well, I'd always been acting. Like I always liked acting. So I took acting classes when I was a kid um, and did like school plays. But I think the first like real intro to comedy was in ninth grade. We had this teacher, her name was Miss Okar. I think that was her name. And she taught an improv class to the students and she also uh was in the comedy sports in town so she was a uh, an actual improviser and then that's where um that's where I like started doing comedy was with her and she thought I was very funny and kind of wanted me to keep doing it and then I did the classes and then I just I never really went like fell into improv but it was mostly just stand up now you have a long list of movies that are on your IMDb page that I'm I- three. 
<laughs> no. It makes it look like you have 40. <laughs> no, I only did three. I've done other stuff. Um, yeah, the latest one I did was this horror comedy called Too Late with Ron Lynch. Um, and um, it was great. It was really fun. It was like a little indie horror comedy about the stand-up comedy scene, which was super fun. Oh, I want to see that. How do we get to see it? You can actually watch it for free on Tubi. Okay. And, um, you can also stream it and you can download it. Cool. And then of other things that you've done, because IMDb messes me over every time I try to quote from it, it's incorrect. So of the things that you have done, what are some uh, name the others you've done that you are really impressed with? Um, of other things that I've done, um, I've yeah, that are like your comedy specials or movies. So I've been on Conan four times, three of which were aired. One was a practice run because I just got the new space. So I was, they like brought me on to like try it out, which was cool. Um, how did that go? That must have been like such a great, I would have jizzed. It was great. I mean, I love Conan. Conan was the best thing for stand ups. I'm sad that it's gone, but. He was great for stand-ups. Um, I think that was great. Having a Comedy Central Presents was great. Um, you know, I think uh, I got to perform in front of 9,000 people um, in front in, at the Clusterfest. And um, yeah, I've just done like a lot of cool stuff. Just like just little things, like even just like traveling and doing a festival in Colorado is like fun. 9,000 people. Tell me what's different from doing that to doing 500 people in a club versus a bar show. I want to hear laugh, the laughs are different. The laughs are slow and you have to wait and it, it like hits you like a wave. It's like a rush of white noise. It's so strange, but it's great. But I want, I think clubs are more fun because I like to do crowd work. So you're really good at the crowd work too. I love the way you played with the people, especially like in the front row that they, they weren't, I don't know if they, like when you started off saying that you were a dom, yeah. or that one lady off to a little to the right, the look on her face was priceless. Like, yeah. What did I get myself into? But yeah, won, that's, I love doing that stuff. It's fun. You won her over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where does your comedy uh, this is kind of like a twofold thing. Um, where does your comedy come from? And when you go to write a joke, where does a joke come from? Does it come from a something you observe or a thought or a premise? Um, or it comes from a lot of personal stories, stuff I've observed intertwined with social commentary, right? So like I have this new bit I'm working on about witchcraft and how I am doing witchcraft, but it kind of divulges into, and I divulged, uh, what's the word? Where it, it turns into um, a being about women and our rights being taken away and like having the same amount of rights as a woman in the 1600s, right? So it starts off with, I'm trying witchcraft and it ends with, you know, if, if I'm gonna be treated like a woman from the 1600s, I might as well learn witchcraft, like why not? Why not just be the whole package of that, you know? You did that at the cellar and it made me die laughing. I feel like for some of my material and I'm kind of coming to accept it, like I'm not for everybody. Like I'm I'm definitely like a more of a coast comedian, right? Like more of a coastal little, uh, little lefty liberals, but... <laughs> But the, for the people who get it, it like, it really, we, we get it. Right. And if someone doesn't get it, I, I just gotta be like, all right, well, then it's, I don't know. <laughs> the way you handle that was like, it was like a master class in how to handle people that maybe don't get, you don't want to get you and just kept barreling through and handling it like a pro. I think there are a lot of people who like really just don't, they don't want to get it because it is like, an uncomfortable truth that they'll have to face, right? If they do. So like, if I'm saying, hey, my rights are being taken away. As a woman, a lot of 
lot of dudes maybe will agree but don't want to agree or they or they're actually happy that that's happening do you know what I mean so it's like they have to face their own shit and there are a lot of women too will like they don't like the feminist stuff they don't like the women empowerment stuff because of whatever reason right because they've been told the only way to get you know to get anywhere in life is to have a man's validation and to get that you have to be a certain way and so I think for a lot of people it's the same it's the same way as like when people see a fat person very happy they just get mad because they're like but I am but I've been told to to live my life like this um and then I'll be happy but you're not like you're just being yourself and happy and that's bullshit I think it's the same way that a lot of women will be like, well, you know, you're not even like trying to be pretty or like trying to be, uh, you know, quiet. You're a loud, fat woman and like people still like you. And I, I, you know, I want to be that. Why can't I be that? Well, fuck you. (laughs) Yes. I think that you're empowering women, whether you're trying to or not, women of a certain body type to embrace their size and Mm -hmm. and just be who they are and not be ashamed of anything on the outside yeah which is so cool try to yeah that's awesome what is it that jenny wants to accomplish before you get old like me and die (laughs) well uh (laughs) i would like to be a comedian powerhouse so like i want to be making comedies not necessarily co- like stand-up I'd love to just move into theaters and like you know even like 500 to a thousand seat theater is happy but like be acting be writing and be creating my own movies and tv would be great fabulous what is it that you want the world to get from you that you didn't say so far um let me think. Um, not everything has to be for you, right? My comedy is not going to be for everybody, and that's okay. My hair is looking great, by the way. <laughs> got a very like Elvis vi- vibe to it right now. Which is four. <laughs> it's got this if little Elvis married Marge Simpson. <laughs> Elvis and I have the same birthday, January eighth. Wow. Same person, me, Elvis, and David Bowie. Um, not everything is for you. And just because it's not for you doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. But also to that, uh, you know, there is a difference between having an opinion you don't, you don't agree with and actual like legitimate hate speech. Totally. Totally. So uh, there's that. I'll say that. And then I also want to say that, like, don't wait to, uh, to live your life, do it now because you're never going to be pretty enough or skinny enough or strong enough or have enough money or whatever. So just fucking just do it now. Yeah, that's for sure. I would give up every penny I have to be out in front of people making them laugh. It's fun. It's really good. I'm I'm very happy that I, I I'm lucky that I had parents who supported me in it. So I'm I'm a very I'm very privileged in that way and I recognize it. But I like wouldn't I wouldn't choose anything else. And I encourage everyone to follow their dreams unless you suck at this and like please just go away. <laughs> there are some comedians that I know I'm just like, please stop and just go home. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. You know, I like we were talking about hate speech. There's this one comedian, there's a couple here in Vegas, they're in every city and they'll get up on stage yeah. and say, that they hate the Jews. And I'm like, it's so hard to sit there with a smile pasted on my face, you know, and look for one good thing they're doing when they say that. I'm like, really, did you have to? Well, it's just like, it's like, okay, Dave, if the Jews do run Hollywood, you are the most famous comedian in the world. So do you maybe thank us, maybe thank the Jews instead of shitting on them being like oh isn't it funny how they do run it well if we run it fucking be thankful okay you're famous because of the jew exactly exactly oh my god we made you so famous dave sorry yeah Yeah, maybe we should go back and rethink that (laughs) we have made one mistake in our lives (laughs) Uh, but um 
Do you have any comedy specials out there that people can watch? You can watch some of my stuff on Comedy Central. Um, on December 7th, I have another like 10 minute set coming out with Comedy Central, which will be really fun. Um, I have a special I'm just kind of waiting to put out. It's an hour, which I shot it last year. So hopefully it still is green. Um, <laughs> but that's called Gen Z and that should be out hopefully by the end of this year, not beginning of next year. Super, super duper. Yeah. So when you, what I would like to have you tell us a couple fun, like weird, hard, stupid, or scary stories from your time on stage. Anything weird, hard, stupid, or scary? Without um, naming I've, been I've been attacked on stage. Whoa. Um, I had a guy and I was, I was, he was, annoying and like ruining the show and I was like what the hell's your problem and he came up and like tried to like walk towards the stage and then he like got in my face and I pushed him and then a bunch of male comics came and tried to help me um and that was actually it went viral on TikTok and I did a bunch of interviews for it which was also very funny because I did the interviews and then I saw how your words get twisted and how wrong reporters can get things like the way they said it was that like um you know the, just some of the facts they said I'm like hey those are completely wrong that never that part didn't happen the, the, this part did happen but that part didn't happen I don't know where you got that from so I'd like call like a bunch of reporters and be like hey you need to you need to edit this because it's not right and then also too Newspapers just they just cut and paste from other papers. There's no one's doing real like real reporting on some of these things. It's just cut and paste, which is crazy. Okay, so here, what's the what is the thing that you're most proud of off stage and on stage so far? Um, I'm really proud of the one hour special I did. I funded it through fans, through uh, you know, money that I raised through family donations. And within like two months, I put together an, an entire hour special that was filmed in New York, just out of like my own tenacity. So, and of course the help of everybody else, but that's pretty cool. I can always say, even if it never sells, I can always be like, well, I did it myself. So that's pretty cool. That is so cool. I can't wait to see that hopefully by the end of the year, Gen Z, right? Gen Z, yeah. What are you most proud of off stage? My friendships. I have really good friendships. Okay. I'm, I try really hard to be a good friend. It takes a lot to make me hate you. A couple of people have succeeded. Um, but mostly I, keep, I think I keep good company. I love that. And I think that that's really important to keep good company. It's so important. It's important to have ethics like to be honest with people. And there's so many values that seem to be going by the wayside that are really important to me. In a yeah. I think integrity, having integrity and having friends who will not yes you, who will keep you accountable and be supportive. So I have a really great group of friends who I can get that from. Fabulous. Yeah. Well. Um, in closing, I'm going to leave it up to you to sign off and to give a pitch for people to follow you or anything you want to say to people watching from your heart. Well, everyone, uh, thanks for watching. You can follow me on Instagram at Jenny Zagrino, J-E-N-N-Y-Z-I-G-R-I-N-O. TikTok is Jenny Zagrino Comedy. Um, hopefully you'll get to see me live. Um, and I want to thank you for supporting uh, local comedians and for you know tuning in yeah let's do it let's follow her on instagram on tiktok do you have a youtube channel or you I want to do it's just jenny zagrino awesome well i look forward so forward to your one hour special and your comedy central 10 10 minute specials that are out so number seven go. what's that number seven wow what's the record um what do you mean what's the record like the album like how many people have had more than seven comedy central specials oh no 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 december 7th is when it comes out oh okay 
no, cool. no, I don't have seven. I wish. <laughs> That'd be great to be writing so much material, but no. Absolutely. Well, I adore you. I adore your material, your Thank delivery, you. your persona, everything. Thank you so much, Jenny Zagrino, everybody. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.